I've been excited about Apocalypse Frame for a while. I like mecha media. I think that comes from growing up hooked on Star Wars and anime. But every time I see a big war machine bristling with rockets or machine guns, every time a Jaeger inexplicably produces a sword, I'm thrilled. I will always be enthralled by the scale of a suit large enough to level buildings, and spend hours daydreaming about the dozens of different arms and armor you could equip it with. I know it's a meme that everybody who watches Gundam misses the point about war being terrible for the cool robots, but that's me. I'm the wow cool robot guy. So over the past year, I've been eyeing Binary Star Games' latest release with building anticipation. You probably heard about Apocalypse Frame from Dragon Kid 11's review back in May of 2022. But as the game exits early access, I promise you that the full version is even better than Dragon Kid promised. It's 100 pages of neat illustrations, robust weaponry, and the best tactical combat the Lumen system has to offer. Buckle up, and let's get in some robots. Apocalypse Frame puts you in the pilot seat of frames. The mechs you and your fellow aces will be driving against the forces of the Republic, a military junta that seized control of the world after an unknown event known as the Infection, wrought devastation upon humanity. Your rebellious faction, the Collective, has turned the Republic's war machines against them, and now fights to free others from forced labor and oppression. There's a little more flavor. Strike teams are divided into the all-rounder Sword Division, the High Damage Arrow Division, and the tanky, nigh-indestructible Shield Division. But aside from that, the role of Apocalypse Frame is fairly malleable. If you're playing in the mecha space, you kind of understand what's happening when you're a scrappy underdog flying missions against an evil empire. The real meat of this game is in the frames themselves. The base game comes with nine different models of mech, with three experimental modes in the advanced rule set. Each mech comes with its own set of special abilities, weapon systems, and playstyles. The M1 Soldier is a basic, no-nonsense infantry unit, ideal for mid-distance combat against all types of enemies. But even if two aces want to fly this model, Modular systems allow for variation in weapon types, meaning you could wield a chain gun while your rival carries a pulse laser, both of which have distinct tactical advantages on the battlefield. Making each frame feel unique and suited for a specific style of play is a smart choice, and allowing for small but consequential changes to a frame's loadout gives a lot of variety to the ways you'll approach combat. And rest assured, the game is all about combat. Ostensibly, Apocalypse Frame uses the Lumen Standard, a limited number of stats, weighted to favor players, with 3 to 4 being a mixed success, and a 5 to 6 being a complete success. However, reading through the combat rules, I think Apocalypse Frame relies much less on a given ace's 3 stats, as opposed to the loadout of their chosen mech. While you can absolutely test your attributes, the majority of die rolls in the game will depend on the kind of weapon you're using, which is allotted a number of d6 to simulate how readily you can depend on the tool in a fight. For instance, the assault rifle is as standard as can be, dealing a respectable amount of damage, or harm, but is otherwise a straightforward and uncomplicated weapon. Because a rifle of this style is supposed to be a mass-produced standard weapon that any ace could be trusted with, it's incredibly reliable. You roll 4d6 to determine whether an attack is successful, which gives you a 99% chance of achieving a success with complications. However, if the assault rifle is something of an old reliable, the sword is a flashy gamble, allocated only a single d6, but yielding a hefty 5 points of harm as compared to the assault rifles too. Lumen games are all about making players feel powerful and cool, with a variety of options to take down waves of enemies, and I think, by making the reliability of a weapon the biggest factor in attacks success or failure, Binary is leveraging the mecha genre's trope of having a fantastic ace pilot mow down waves of lesser drivers to great effect. Combat should take place on a grid to get the full effect of the system's arsenal of weapons and abilities. Each round is handled quickly, with players having only two standard actions on their turn. However, each frame also has a set amount of fuel and tension points to spend, which allow you to activate a special system or reroll a basic attack. Furthermore, when enemies are defeated, the GM will roll for drops, which rewards pilots with additional tension. This loop makes it possible for a pilot to unleash an astonishing array of missiles, grenades, and laser blasts in one turn. GMs are instructed to respond proportionally, inflicting damage and environmental complications on players as needed, but always focusing on escalating, meaningful encounters, so that in the face of the devastation their frames unleash upon the battlefield, aces are reminded they're not invincible. Lumen games are supposed to be power fantasies, but that doesn't mean Apocalypse Frame won't let your mech take damage. You essentially have three phases of full health, since your vigor fails twice before your frame is out of commission. 
The first two times your vigor runs out, you'll roll on a frame damage table, which will complicate your ability to fight, while still giving you a chance to participate in battle, which I think is a nice concession to ensure a defeated player doesn't have to totally disengage from a session. However, when you finally run through your last chunk of vigor, you have two options. First, you can eject, allowing your ace to fight another day, and potentially pay later to have this mech salvage and repaired. But the most interesting option, for me, is the last stand, which is exactly what it sounds like. Your final turn grants you immunity to incoming damage, maxes out your tension and fuel, then adds another 5 points of both for good measure, and removes any once per round ability limitations. You get one last chance to go out in a blaze of glory, flashing a smile and saying that thing you always wanted to say, before unloading everything you could possibly throw at your enemies, destroying your frame, your character, and everything else that has the misfortune of falling behind your sights. It's an incredible way to handle character death, and I'm absolutely stealing this mechanic for other games going forward. I haven't even scratched the surface on things like tags and customizable weapon systems, but the short version is that there's a ton of options to make your base abilities stronger, better tailored for your frame's playstyle, and generally more explosive. I think there's definitely a comparison to be made to Lumen Rider Core, which I covered a while ago, which similarly uses tags to give players full control over how they want to develop their combat experience. All of which is to say, the Lumen framework is perfect for the customization and tinkering with systems that's a staple of the mecha genre. Apocalypse Frame wants players to feel like they've got command of their own personalized war machine, and feel like an absolute terror on the battlefield. Fans of Armored Core, Gundam, and Battletech will definitely understand what this game is going for, but there is one notable comparison I haven't yet brought up. I can't say for certain whether this game is going to scratch the same itch as Lancer. To my great shame, I haven't successfully read it as of the writing of this review. What I will say is that I found Apocalypse Frame much more accessible and straightforward than the few times I've leafed through a Lancer PDF. I'm sure Lancer's a great game, but given the choice, I'd rather take the easy to read, fast paced combat of Apocalypse Frame any day of the week. If you want a dynamic and interesting tactical mech experience, but are a bit intimidated by the breadth of the most popular mecha TTRPG out there, I highly recommend you pick up Apocalypse Frame. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate everybody who takes the time to uh, make it to the end of these videos. Uh, I work really hard on them, uh, so thanks. If you want to find more of my work, I'm at AaronSXL on Twitter, and my main website is aavoit.com, where I talk about games, writing, and health policy. I also do two podcasts. The first is at Mortified Pod, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. We're actually about to talk about the three recent Pinocchio adaptations that came out, which will be wild. Uh, I have another podcast that's at The Bible Boys, where me and my ex-evangelical friends, Michael and Josh, talk about Christian media. We're going to talk about uh, A Week Away, which is like a high school musical, but for Christians sort of deal, which I actually kind of liked. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, please check those out. Thanks as always for watching. I hope to have another video out in a couple weeks. Uh, until then, see ya.